Oh wow, this place is huge. This is so great. I can't wait to move in. What do you think these buildings are for? Well, buildings are a form of shelter created by humans, much like our own mess. Many of these buildings are office spaces or retail spaces or even residential spaces. Some buildings are of mixed use, such as retail spaces on the bottom floors and residential spaces on the upper floors. I wonder why humans use glass and steel for their buildings. Sticks work great for us as structure. Lumber is commonly used in American homes, but steel is used in cities because it's stronger and can last longer than wood can. It would be very difficult to make buildings as tall as these from wood. It appears humans don't spend much time outside, like we birds do. Humans like to be in control of their own environment. They use buildings to create an ultimate environment for themselves. The buildings are insulated enclosures which separates outside weather and the inside controlled space. Humans control the humidity level and temperature levels of their own buildings. They particularly like this thing called air conditioning. Well, we use insulation in our own nests as well by gathering straw, fabric, string, hair, scraps of paper, and many other things to insulate our nests with. Yes, we also have concepts of structure and insulation just like the humans do. We use sticks as our structure and we use soft scraps as our insulation. Hmm, how do humans decide where they should live? Good question. Location is everything. The most coveted area is one that is close to work, close to food, and close to amenities, as well as near nature. Lucky for us, birds don't have to pay rent because that is very expensive. What is that? That is an electric locomotive, which is basically a train on an electric rail line. It's a form of public transportation that humans use, just like they use buses. It is a very efficient way to move many people at the same time. The trains have set routes and people take them to move around the city faster. It's also a very good alternative to using cars because parking is so very hard to find in the city. The streets are busy. Let's get a bird's eye view of the city. It's really easy to get lost here. Nah, once you get familiar with the city, it's not so bad. Cities have a high density of people and must be well organized. Otherwise, it's just complete and total chaos. This city is organized on a grid system. Each square formed in the grid is a block. And that is where the term city block comes from. Why do the buildings take up the whole block? Well, that's because the space is a commodity in the city. The more space you have, the more space you can rent out to people. Building to the edge of the street corner is not as friendly and inviting as a nice green courtyard, which creates a relief space between the street and the building. The courtyard is something designers are trying to integrate because architecture is about the experience and not just about the function of the building. I don't see many trees around here. What are the good locations for us birds here in the city? These cars are scary. Well, us birds have a very flexible living arrangement. We can live as trees, in the bell towers, and in roof eaves. I used to live in the E in the Dairy Queen restaurant. And by the way, not all vehicles are scary. There are food, food trucks around here, and occasionally you can find crumbs and even french fries there. Hey, look over there. Why do you think all of those people are over there? They're over there for many reasons, but honestly it depends. Basically, they're there for the same reasons that we hang around power lines. That's to participate in people watching and socialization. And also, people seem to be drawn to nature. There's a hypothesis about this idea actually called biophilia. Ooh, I think we should check it out. Like I said, people like nature. 
Parks are green spaces often used as restful and relaxing socially. I like it here. A nice, quiet place away from the hustle and bustle of the city, yet close enough I can still get a fry if I need to. This looks like a great spot for me to build my nest. That is a sculpture. How do you know? What if I make it my home? What is it then? Is it architecture? Is it a sculpture? Is it art? What is it? That is a good question. Hmm. Well, I guess it's all about perspective. Are the definitions based on experience? The definitions based on scale? Hmm. I thought that art was an outward expression of emotion and interpretation of something you see and relate to internally. Whereas architecture is something you inhabit or experience physically. Sculpture, on the other hand, is an object of nature and is represented in an artistic way. Hmm. Some art can be found inhabited on that. Does that make it architecture? Some architecture has organic sculptural form. Does that make it a sculpture? Sculpture can be considered a three-dimensional version of art. Is art then an umbrella term used as a category for objects and places which facilitate feeling and emotion? All facilitate similar qualities, yet different based upon human interaction. Interesting.